Hi there, welcome, welcome to Homekeepers. It's so good to be with you today. It's just an absolute privilege and pleasure. And thank you for being there and thankful for all the new ones that I've been hearing from uh, because probably most of you feel just as I do that there's nothing more important in America right now than homekeeping and that we take it very, very seriously and we like to talk about kind of the whole world because it affects the home and uh, we will be doing that today. My guest is a return guest, evangelist uh, David Seriano, and he uh, he's not your regular evangelist, he's a prophecy teacher. And I remember uh, my dad was a pastor and when he would bring prophecy teachers in there, I was pretty young, but I just sat there just absolutely transfixed. Um, and it's wonderful to know that the scripture tells us what's gonna happen. And uh, then you get a good prophecy teacher and they can kind of tell you in more detail then you might pick up just reading through the scripture. So I'm glad to have David back. And um, there's so much happening right now. Um, I know quite a bit about the Bible, not as much as a lot of people, but I know some prophecy and I'm watching it. Uh, you take a good look at Israel the last year and you are going to know that we are in the midst of Bible prophecy right before our eyes, but not only that, that Jesus is coming back. Do they ever teach that in your church? Ever talk about the fact that Jesus is actually coming back to earth? So I um, hope we can cover a lot of those things with David Seriano here today. I'm going to join Wanda and we're going to fix lemon basil bow ties, which, you know, is pasta. I think that uh, lemon and basil is one of the most wonderful, wonderful combinations. And of course, there's no end to what you can do with pasta. So we'll fix that and see if you might want the recipe. Before I join her, I want to remind you, we are viewer supported. That means the viewers support the program. Isn't that smart of me to figure that out? And so if you would like to support us, and I've always said and believe when the Holy Spirit urges you to give, it's a good idea to do it. And I also believe that when that happens, if you respond to it, every single need would be met. So I ask you to support our program. And if you use credit card 1-800-229-0059 or write to us at Homekeepers, Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758. And may I thank you in advance. I got Wanda over here. And Wanda, you read all the mail, don't you? I do. Yes. We have the best viewers mm -hmm. ever, I have to say. Mm -hmm. They're all wonderful, mm -hmm. wonderful people. Mm -hmm. Thank you out there for mm -hmm. sending us the beautiful letters mm -hmm. that you send. Yeah, and, and they'll go from office to office depending what they say. We'll take them yeah. down, show them to Stephanie. We do. Uh, you bless us. That's yep. the truth. You bless. Okay, it looks like you're putting garlic yes. in there. Into about uh, one to two teaspoons of olive oil, and that's one clove of garlic in here. We're going to let that saute. So you really kind of smell it. Mm. You wouldn't dare fix what? a dish like this without garlic. It would be oh. like a sin. Hey, if anybody knows anything about you out there, <laughs> they ought to know that you love lemon. Oh, yes. That is like, and you're, you like yellow, the color yellow. So I'm yes. kind of thinking all goes together. Do you know that I read uh, mm, several years ago that. that if you paint a house yellow, it will sell faster. Well, that might be true. Uh huh. I think it is. We grew up in a, my mom and and uh, I so I had my mom's house painted yellow and sold just like that. Wow. But um, okay, I'm gonna I start like it because it's a happy color. I have my house yellow inside, and it just makes me smile when I come home. That's some ooh, first spark yeah. in here. Some lemon zest mm -hmm. and some salt and pepper, and that's kind of it, right? It really kind of is. Yes. And I'm going to take Should this off. Should we turn that down? I'm going to yeah. just take it off for a minute because I don't want to. The garlic get... is starting to burn a little bit. Well, we, no, we don't want it to. Don't want it to. We don't want it to. I'm not going to add all this. By the way, you, this is bow tie pasta. You want to cook that a little mm -hmm. bit. Um, what do you use? I didn't realize I'm not this use was so simple. All of that. Look at it's that. It's very, well, it's your type of recipe. You love simple. Simple's good. And she's right about the lemon, whether it's a, a, a lemon pie or there's lemon bars, oh. lemon cake. Yeah. Can't. Really, I mean, I no. probably could add more, more, a little more in here, maybe, huh? Why not? Let's just maybe add a little put more it back in here. on the heat well. a little bit. Okay, what I'm going to do is, um, 
You need to cut up some of the uh, basil for me. Doesn't have to be too fine, but just enough. And then. There's a good size. Yeah. <laughs> Can I have your plate? And we'll. Does the basil go on top? Well, I don't know. What does it say? I don't. Add basil, toss to coat. All right, you're behind. You got to give me some basil. Yeah, I got to toss basil it. Basil will flavor it. I forgot all about the basil. You know, that's okay. Which is. And I forgot to tell you. Which to is the you, so. key. Hey, why don't you throw some of that in here for me, please? Yes. Uh, basil is, is one of those. Oh, not all of it. Basil is one of those. Okay. Well, okay, that's good. Yeah, I did. One get of those up. things. It's <gasps> it's um, a Smell nice. Smell that. Yeah. Well, basil can be strong. You want to use your oh, own discretion wonderful. at that. We're supposed to let that cook a little bit, but oh well, here we go. So, I'm going to put some of this oh, on your plate. Don't and you say, add oh some well, here we go. I'm trying to give us a <laughs> gig on the Food Network. <laughs> no, no, that won't work. Do you want to put some Parmesan, oh, yeah. some shredded Parmesan on that? I think you will like it. Well, do you like lemon? Just not as much as I do, right? You, uh, yeah, no. Good tip. Fork if you want to try some. No, that's all right. Okay. I'll just let you go for well, it. Well, I know I like it. I know. <laughs> mm. Talk, my mouth's full. Okay, so what I'm thinking, mm. when you try this recipe, you might want a little more orange or lemon zest, but that'll be up to you to try it and see what you it like. It really doesn't need it. Okay, well, let's see what I said. That is awesome. Good. The base, and, and of course, it needs to hang out together a little bit longer, but it's delicious. Good, mm -hmm. awesome, wonderful. All right, you can have this recipe if you want it. Information's coming up on your screen. Several ways to get it, so choose the one that's best for you. And then if you haven't met him, you'll meet my guest, David Sariano. If you would like a copy of today's recipe, you may receive it by contacting us through social media as listed on the screen. When requesting a copy through the mail, be sure to include a self-addressed stamped envelope. Thank you, and please know we always appreciate hearing from our viewers. Okay, welcome back. Glad to have you. Good to be here. Aren't we living in exciting times? Well, exciting times, uh, absolutely wonderful times. Uh, just enough to, if anyone knows anything about the Bible, a little bit of study, you realize that uh, history repeats itself and what God has done in the Old Testament, He's doing in the New Testament mm -hmm. and even beyond that to our day. I have a whole history in church. The Gaithers recently wrote a song about the church, really about the church building. This is the place where we pray. This is the place where we cry. This is the place yeah. where we start till death do us part, sure. where we say goodbye. A church life. And I remember the prophecy teachers coming from time to time, but there's not as many of them anymore. That, that, that's true. That's not good. No, it isn't. Uh, I, I think what happened is we went through a phase in the 70s, which was the Kingdom Now era, if mm -hmm. you remember that correctly. Mm -hmm. And everyone was dwelling on the Kingdom today. And I had even, I even had rebuke, so to speak, to me that said, why are you always concentrating on the Kingdom to come and you're not talking about the Kingdom now? Well, I was preaching about the Kingdom. Maybe because the Bible says so. <laughs> exactly. Uh, but, but I was also studying about the Kingdom to come and, and they, were, they were ignoring it and, and setting it aside. They weren't interested in that. I fell in love with it years and years and years ago. And I've put uh, 56 years in the ministry, um, most of that in studying end time Bible prophecy. And I, I love it and, um, and I love speaking about it and it's, a, it's really a passion in my heart. Did you know my brother-in-law, David Crabtree? I did, yes. Yeah, I thought you did. Uh, it, one Sunday he preached a message on what to do if you miss the rapture. You can't believe the people oh. who ordered <laughs> those cassette tapes, cassette then they would be a DVD. Uh, I mean, from all over the United States, and sure. they kept coming in, kept coming yeah. in. Uh, people are interested in it, and I think it would do well if uh, our pastors and so forth would dig into it more. Yeah. Well, well, they, they don't want they don't want to uh, dig into it for because number one, it's very difficult to study. It takes years and years to study. It's difficult. Mm -hmm. uh, n number two, it's controversial because some people believe a rapture, some people don't, and so it's controversial. And uh, thirdly, uh, you have to take a stand somewhere. You have to say, this is what I believe. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them don't want to take a stand. They don't know how to take a stand because they haven't studied it. Mm -hmm. And so those are, those are three critical issues. And I, I think we're just ignoring it. And plus we're focusing on, the th on other things. And that's the problem. Well, there's, there's a lot of things uh, happening. And 
I, I feel it's going to get stronger and an American church hopefully will get involved. There's a lot of Christians being killed, yeah, killed sure. around oh, the world. For sure. Uh, Nigeria yeah. is, is dangerous for Christians. And the Bible tells us that's going to happen. And uh, we sit over here in our materialism and I'm just as guilty as anyone, yeah. you know, yeah. and it's like, well, that's far away, but we can't look at it that way. No, no. We, we, I, I think we have to have a burden for mm -hmm. situations like that. And, and uh, a lot of people are, are still sold into slavery in different parts of the world. And, and uh, there's also sex trafficking. And, and the mm -hmm. Book of Revelation said when, when mystery Babylon fell, falters and fall, f falls, that, uh, that one of the reasons they fell was because of the slavery issue. That's in the Book of Revelation. It's slavery, uh, the, the, uh, the Greek points it out as a, a summa. And it means the, the souls, souls of men, and, and that's exactly where uh, the, where the difficulty is, and we have to learn to to appreciate that and pray for those people, as well as revival here in America. Yes, and um, we're wa we're watching it on TV now. Uh, what to you, as as a prophecy teacher, to say in recent weeks or months, maybe? Uh, what's some of the most significant things that have happened right before our eyes? We've watched them on TV. Well, just recently, uh, uh, the president, President Trump, uh, said that there would, uh, he was looking for a two-state solution along with uh, Netanyahu, Benjamin Netanyahu of uh, Israel, that uh, they, that's what they were thinking that is going to happen, which is going to include the Arab people. Uh, somewhere, uh, mm -hmm. and I know a lot of our prophecy teachers feel that that it, uh, the whole land of Israel belongs to the Jews, biblically, rightfully so. Uh, but, but as you look at what's happening in the world, I'm not sure that's going to happen because that is uh, in in the book of Joel, it talks about the fact that when they divide my land, that's what when the Lord is going to be prompted to to come and the battle of Armageddon will be fought. So, uh, if anything, they'll be disobedient to that uh, and they they won't follow the fact that it belongs to the Jew, Jewish people. And uh, I think with that two-state solution, if, if indeed it goes that way, uh, uh, th that um, uh, they, they will probably sign that agreement, and that may at some future point involve the Antichrist. So that's a significant thing. Uh, the fact and also, and that's in the last few days, really. That oh, I've it just, been it just about happened. It. Yes, <laughs> it just happened. Uh, and and uh, then the idea that uh, 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 the president has declared uh, Jerusalem the capital and moved our embassy there, that's big time news and everything is focusing from since the days of Truman as we were talking mm -hmm. about. Since the days of Truman, which was, a, he was a fantastic president because he immediately recognized the nation of Israel. So since that time until, uh, until Donald Trump now, uh, great things are happening. Yes, and um, we were going over uh, some of that history. I, I remember presidents from Roosevelt. And uh, I, I, I was, I don't know, I guess just heard people talking, but they wondered why did he bring Harry Truman on for a vice president? It was, but, a, good, it was a good move prophetically. Oh, oh yes, yeah. because Roosevelt was not that friendly to the Jewish people. And uh, Jonathan Kahn was here, who was quite a, uh, he's a messianic rabbi. And he said that Truman knew the Bible. He knew the Bible he and he immediately uh, had a friendship with Israel. Yeah, yeah he, he knew his scripture, and I, I, he must have studied somewhere along the line. I was too young too. I was mm -hmm. born during the days of Roosevelt, uh, and but I was too young to to know Truman and remember too much about it. But mm -hmm. uh, you said you were. Near I've been him. that close to <laughs> yeah, him. Yeah. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> Never met said. him, but. <laughs> Uh, uh, but but he, he obviously had some kind of Bible training or teaching Sunday school, church, or whatever, it, yeah. and he, he knew a scripture. He knew he had to recognize, he did it, he did it right away, recognize the nation of Israel. It, it was a perfect man for vice president who then became president. Yeah, I should probably elaborate on that a little bit. Uh, Truman was known for taking a walk every day, mm -hmm. a long walk. Um, went in Washington, D.C., you know, he'd go with the Secret Service. Uh, he retired Independence, Missouri, which is part of Kansas City, Missouri. I worked downtown at a bank then. My dad was a pastor there. And he'd, he'd come walking. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, yeah. I'd say a very magnetic personality. Yeah. 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 And, and the, the great thing about, like, a, a Billy Graham is Billy Graham, I think, in my opinion, he was the last, he's the last great prophet to America, Billy Graham. We have prophets today. But he's the last great one. Uh, I mean, a magnificent and far above all others because he talked to every U.S. president from Truman 
-hmm. till yes, Donald Trump. Every single one of them. So that was like a last day's emphasis from Billy Graham about salvation, about knowing the Lord, believing in Jesus Christ, getting saved, like no other prophet had the ability to talk to our leaders of this country, America. And he had their ear. Oh, he, he, he was sure in did. the White House. Yeah, he was, all he, of them. All of them, yeah. He was the, he was, he's the prophet to the presidents is what he was, mm -hmm. the speaker for the presidents, yeah. Now, I have tried to make a list on both sides uh, why the Lord would be very kind to the United States or bring judgment, and there's both yeah. sides. Yeah. Uh, one of them, uh, recognize it in Israel, that's, that's good. Also, uh, we've fed the world many times. Right. We have defended other countries. Right. Uh, we've been generous Generous right. almost to and a Plus fault. the greatest missionary program. Right, missions. And, yeah. But on the other hand, we have proponents for same-sex marriage, which right. is a stench in the nostrils of God. Right. And also abortion. I, I saw just quickly a baby that had been dissembled right out of its mother's womb, and I yeah. can't get it out of my, it, just, it uh. just sickens me. How anybody could work in that industry yeah. uh, better yeah. check their soul. So this is negative. There's a lot of positives, yeah. and so well, you, think, you think God yeah, is checking the scales. Yeah, well, well he, uh, actually, uh, in my, I wrote a book, uh, another book, which I don't have with me today, but mm -hmm. it's called The Cultural Collapse of America, and in it I explain the reasons why we are collapsing, and I bring abortion, homosexuality, and a number of other issues, uh, and uh, actually every superpower, which we're the last remaining superpower, every superpower collapses. It's, it, uh, the history, in the history of the mm. world, there has never been a superpower that lasted forever. It just doesn't happen. Uh, and I've got history on my side when I speak that because the British Empire uh, right. was collapsing in the 20s and finally fell apart totally. We had to rescue them in World War II. Uh, then then the, the USSR collapsed in 1990. And so we're at that stage where there's that change. and. Uh, uh, and what that's going to open up the door for is, as we talked about Angela Merkel, uh, what's going to open the door is that they're going to be looking for somebody else other than a Donald right. Trump and other than America because we're not going to have the solutions and the answers all the time anymore because of what's happening internally within us. So there is a balance that's there. You're right. There's, there's a good things we did to America, but uh, I mean, for, for Israel, rather. And the I American think... Americans repent. Uh, yeah. And, and so I think that uh, that's probably one of the greatest things. You mentioned those, we mentioned those three, Israel, missionary program, helping the poor. Probably Israel is probably the most profound reason why America began America was started in, in order for the Jews to return to their land. Mm -hmm. um, give me your books there. If you just tuned in, I'm, I might just <laughs> forget to get out of the program because I love prophecy. <clears throat> I'm talking to David Seriano, and this, you told me, is a novel? It's a novel, yeah. I'm impressed. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I, would have, I wanted to write a commentary, but there's too many commentaries out there. That I, uh -huh. you know, who would read it? So I turned it into a novel instead. Well, congratulations. I think that's one. And it's called A Look Beyond. And also intergalactic warfare. Yeah. Uh, the, I chose the word intergalactic instead of international because uh, to me, the whole warfare is, is really between God and the devil. And they're really fighting over the universe. That's, you know, we, we isolate mm -hmm. everything into America or into our world. But this is a massive uh, fight that they're, uh, that they're in. Uh, and we're involved in it, of course, spiritual, mm -hmm. spiritual wickedness in high places, mm -hmm. what we struggle against. But the real warfare is between God and the devil. And the reason for that is like similar to Job, God has our worship and the devil wants it. Mm -hmm. You see, and that's the, to me, that's the fight. And that's what's going to happen in the book of Revelation. And we have the uh, website on the screen and also uh, these books are at Amazon. Uh, I think you'll want to get them if you're a reader. I'm a reader and um, I've heard a reader is a leader. Um, one of the things that you'll just see it on your internet once in a while it's the produce that Israel is growing. And that's that sandy children of Israel with sure. Moses. And, but the Bible said it would blossom as a rose. Yes, yeah, right. That, Unbelievable. Yeah, yeah, I know. That's, that's the promise. And we used to read that in Bible school. You know, uh -huh. The desert shall yeah, blossom. Like, yeah, like, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that's exactly what is happening and, and the, with the kibbutzes and all that uh, that's there. And, and the, the work that they're doing is, is phenomenal. And, and God is bringing that to pass for the end times, I believe. Mm -hmm. 
And, and many people are going over there. I, I've been to Israel uh, yeah, myself. Yeah, I've been a couple times. And, and you've been a couple times. Uh, and uh, it's just fascinating to see all of this coming together. And, and I, I, think, I think the Jews are going to have their temple. And it's going to be somewhere near the mosque. Uh, we well, didn't, to, didn't Trump or someone say they're going to rebuild the temple? Uh, uh, yes. Or, well, I read well, that. Not I, Trump. But, I, I don't know if it was Trump. But, no. but Yeah, but it was some, someone said mm -hmm. that. And it was a rabbi. Like, who's, like there's a plan. Yeah. The, the rabbis are believing that. Uh, that the mm -hmm. temple is going to be built, and I think that will happen, uh, and and I think that's one of the signs that we're going to see as well. So all, all these are like step by step plans, and you can even go back um, hundreds, or I mean a thousand years ago, and realize what what uh, was happening with the what was the first Reich, second Reich. We always talk about the third Reich, which is Adolf Hitler. Mm -hmm. Well, if there's a third Reich, there had to have been a first and a second Reich, and there was in history, mm -hmm. and it was the blessings of the the church that placed it on these leaders, which eventually led to. Adolf Hitler, who ended killing six million, ended up killing six million Jews, uh, and that, of course, prompted then the rebirth of Israel, which is a sad way to do it, but that's exactly what happened. I think we would be very smart to have a great friendship with Israel, sure. just being practical. Um, I just read where they have invented an electric airplane that is second to none, and also interesting things they're doing in medicine with cancer and so forth. And anybody that's developing those kind of things, you want to be their friend. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. You want to yeah. get in on I have two people in my heart right now with very serious cancer. And um, God has the secrets to those, and he gives them yeah, to yeah. the scientists. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. He, he does, and, he, that's, and that's what he's doing uh, with Israel. And that's why we have a good relationship with them, because of what, what we've done medically and everything here in America, mm -hmm. but with the, the Jewish people as well, with the nation of Israel, uh, that's one of the blessings I, more than likely, will lead into further things that are going to happen in the future. Of course, mm -hmm. we believe that. Okay, um, when you go into a church and pastors... Um, this gentleman is, travels and teaches prophecy in churches. What do you do? Go for a, a week, maybe, or a weekend, or uh, however it works? Usually it's a weekend. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll do it, uh, I've done it many times in the past, a Saturday and then a Sunday. Uh, usually that's what it is. Uh, I have done a Sunday through a Friday. Mm -hmm. I've done that before. That's more rare, mm -hmm. but because it's usually a Sunday. Um, I was just in Sebastian, Florida, like on a Wednesday night just a couple of weeks ago. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, then, then I'll, I'll be traveling once I get back to New York, then I've got my schedule planned out for April, May, June, July, et cetera. Et cetera. Well, I strongly recommend him for your church. Uh, the churches have kind of gotten away somewhat with traveling ministries, and that's a shame because they enrich the church. I have a wonderful marriage counselor that comes on here every month, and churches ought to bring him in, you know, sure. and, and bring in prophecy and because uh, there are specialties. A pastor can't be a specialty on everything. No, no. And so we've got his website up there, and you've uh, heard him enough to know that he would be a blessing to your people. So I strongly uh, recommend that. Um, if you had one thing to pinpoint, because there's many, that says Jesus is coming, and it might be sooner, a lot sooner than you think, what would that be? Well, uh, I, I think some of the signs that we see in Matthew 24, uh, uh, in Matthew 24, it talks about wars and rumors of wars uh, and... Uh, earthquakes. Er earthquakes, oh, exactly. Yeah. They're getting close to Florida. Yeah, and, and all, all of that is they're, they're being... Um, uh, there's, there's more of them than what there was uh, right, say, a lot more. 30 years ago or mm -hmm. something like that. So that's, that's being uh, uh, something that's really greater than, than mm -hmm. it ever was. And I mm -hmm. think just some of these signs, and, and uh, it, it, it says in Luke, uh, it says in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, it says, um, it's really Matthew and Luke, really, where it talks about the fig tree, which we believe is a nation of Israel. But it's not only just the fig tree. In Luke, it says, when you see the fig tree and all the other trees, which means that it's not just about the nation of Israel, but when you see the other nations that are lining up, like the United States or like uh, Russia that took over the Crimea, uh, you know, that's one of the easy things for, for it was for me to pick out and mm -hmm. say when they, when they fought in Ukraine and, 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 uh, and took over the Crimea, that's one of the reasons why Trump has had so many problems. And that's why they're out to, they've been out to impeach him, <laughs> because God is doing something with that part of the I world. Agree. 
Uh, and, and then he was in North Korea. God's doing something with that part of the world. Armies are going to come from the east. Armies are going to come from the north. And those armies from the north can come right through uh, Ukraine and right into the Crimea, into, into the Black Sea, uh, through the Bosphorus Strait that connects them to the Mediterranean mm -hmm. Sea and, and attack Israel uh, at Megiddo in the northern part of the country. You're giving me goosebumps. Uh, yeah. A uh, couple more things. Globalization, is that significant? Uh, uh, very much so, because uh, and this is one of the right reasons why uh, Trump has been so vilified by the, the other nations, uh, and I think why he's facing much, so much trouble And that's when I say praise yeah, God. Yeah. Uh, and globalization is, uh, uh, I, I, don't, I don't think Barack Obama was a globalist, but he never really said that. But, but for sure, Donald Trump is not a globalist. Mm -hmm. He, uh, he doesn't want to fit into the globalist pattern, uh, and the Antichrist wants globalism, and that's why Trump is so hated, uh, because he's bucking against the system mm -hmm. of the world and, and against the system of the devil. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing, they're clamping down on speech. I read, and you read things a lot of places, can't verify it, but that pastors in California the preach against homosexuality could be targeted for hate speech. Yeah, uh, that is a red flag, isn't it? Absolutely. Uh, you, 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 you know, we'll find things that we won't things that we won't be able to declare from our our pulpits anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, I, when I wrote my book, the wake up. Yeah, when I wrote my book, the cultural collapse of America, mm -hmm. I devoted I think it was 14 pages to homosexuality, and and I talked about it. And I had uh, uh, another fe fellow minister friend of mine, C. L. Jones, and I get my charts from him, my prophecy charts from mm -hmm. him, and, and he said, "How did you dare and he, uh, write so much about homosexuality?" Which he's against it too, but another. In other words, how did you dare to put yourself out on a limb like that? Because it's dangerous today. Uh, it will be even worse in the future. My son-in-law is a pastor, and he has to protect himself from that kind of hate that's going to come toward him. Oh, well, I have a school expert, on, education expert on here regularly, and yeah. uh, you can't believe how they're pushing it, even the kindergartners. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they, and uh, first graders, they're pushing transgenderism. Transgender, sure. And um, all of these things are saying... We're living in the end times. Yeah, and what happens is usually a, a nation will move in the positive direction, but once you get so diverse as we are, diversity is good, mm -hmm. but it, it, diversity lasts for uh, it lasts good for maybe about 100, 150 years, maybe 200 and some odd years to a, to a nation without much problems. But, but at, at some point, diversity becomes so, diver a nation becomes so diversified, then you have to give rise to all these groups that we're talking about. Yes, and we're almost out of time, but diversity with uh, false religions is not good. It is not good not at good all. Not good at all. No, no, no. Hey, next time, will you be down here next year? Uh, I will be. Okay, you'll be here. Sure, okay. well, of course. <laughs> um, I love it. I just love it. And... Uh, Boy, the day we're living in is so exciting because when he's here next year, we'll have a whole new list of things probably that have happened that Jesus is coming, and that's good news, Amen. okay? Join me next time remembering no higher calling than that of a homekeeper. God bless you. If you should miss a homekeeper's program, you can catch up by going to www.ctnonline.com. Click on CTN Programs and then on Homekeepers.